What's up everyone, uh, welcome back to Rally Pharma. If you're new here, hi, my name is Linda, a pharmacist and I'll be your host. You know this is World's Best Doctors channel, so welcome. Um, we are continuing with our series of careers in pharmacy and uh, today I also have a special guest. You know how we welcome guests here? Let us do our drum rolls for her. <laughs> yes, so now um, she's going to introduce herself. Welcome Dr. Chari. please introduce yourself, then I'll introduce the topic of the day. Okay, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Wangare Itotia. Uh, I'm a radio pharmacist at Kenyatta University Teaching Referral and Research Hospital. Thank you for having me, Linda. Welcome. Uh, so as she's already introduced, she jumped ship and introduced the topic. We're going to talk about radio pharmacy. And guys, just to brag a little bit, she's um, she's been recognized as one of uh, top 40 under 40 women, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you see I'm bringing you people who are like top notch here. So uh, without wasting your time, let us start. Uh, what is radio pharmacy? Um, radio pharmacy is a pharmacy specialty mm -hmm. uh, that deals with the preparation of radioactive drugs uh -huh. and uh, these drugs are used for the diagnosis and uh, sometimes treatment mm -hmm. of various diseases but mainly we concentrate on cancer. Mm -hmm. So they're just normal drugs mm -hmm. but they have a radioactive component to it. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, basically in layman's language, radio pharmacy is just a field that deals with radioactive medicines for patients. Yes. Oh wow, looks like a relatively new field. So tell us about like a day in life in your activities, like what are your duties, what are your responsibilities and how does your day in life look like? Uh, okay, so my typical day starts at uh, 4 a.m. What? So uh, the reason it has to start uh, too early as compared to the normal practices is because mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. to prepare the radioactive drugs mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Yeah. As opposed to your normal ceftriaxone or your mm -hmm. normal paracetamol mm -hmm. where you can uh, produce today and ship to various uh, regions in the world mm -hmm. because the shelf life is around two, two years or three years depending yeah. on the expiry. Mm -hmm. uh, radioactive drugs have to be prepared on a daily basis because yeah. they have a very, very short half-life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they do not allow mm -hmm. the transport uh, uh, to longer distances. Okay. So in most instances, you have to produce the drug where mm -hmm. it's going to be administered. Yeah. It has to be administered within a very short duration of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my day was starting at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. So the radio pharmacists and uh, the radio pharmacy team will go in uh, for work at 4 a.m. Yeah. So that by the time the patient has uh, comes in yeah. at around 8 a.m., the mm -hmm. drug is ready. Yeah. And uh, by meaning the drug is ready, we do not only do the production. Yeah. Uh, just like other drugs, these mm -hmm. drugs are subjected to various quality checks. Yeah. Uh, as the same case as other drugs. Yeah. So you might require to do GC, HPLC, TLC, mm -hmm. uh, endotoxin, sterility, depending on what you're dealing with. Yeah. Okay. So we do all this before the patient comes in at 8. And by the time the patient comes in at 8, mm -hmm. we are ready and uh, they can be injected with the drug. Okay, uh, so now uh, what time, since you start your work at 4 a.m., yes, what time does your work stop? Do you go until all the way in the evening or? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I'll go in at 4 a.m. and yeah. then probably by uh, noon, uh -huh. 1 p.m., yeah. I'm out. Ah, okay. Good, yes. good, good, yes. good. Uh, so now I just want to um, ask more about now this preparation of radionuclides. Yeah, so is it a risky procedure and uh, what are the risks involved in preparation of this? Are they the same risks that are involved like chemo or something of the sort? And how do you like protect yourself against that? Because you know these are radioactive substances, they, they have the potential of actually affecting you. Yeah. Uh, okay, sometimes people uh, see as if I feel people see it's more dangerous than it actually is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, there are various measures that mm -hmm. have been put in place, mm -hmm. both by the Pharmacy and Poison Sport, yeah. by the Radiation Protection Board, mm -hmm. and worldwide by the International Atomic Energy Agency, okay, okay. Uh, on the safety measures that should be in place before mm -hmm. a facility mm -hmm. can start producing radioactive material. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, mm -hmm. during the production process, mm -hmm. there is nowhere where we are uh, uh, exposed, especially yeah. for petrodeo pharmaceutical, there is nowhere where okay. we are actually exposed. Yeah 
to the radioactive drug. Okay. <laughs> Everything is uh, done inside uh, facilities we call hot cells. Yeah. And a hot cell offers mm -hmm. shielding. So mm -hmm. shielding means mm -hmm. the radioactive material because it's radiation is energy that moves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, it just stops the radiation from getting to you. To you. Okay. When you're doing quality control, mm -hmm. we do get exposed a bit, yeah. uh, but the amount of uh, radiation that mm -hmm. we get exposed to mm -hmm. is probably similar to what you're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. from the yeah. background. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those measures are in place, but mm -hmm. of course you cannot produce radioactive material if you yeah. do not have the necessary shielding. The necessary shielding. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So shielding uh, is our major aspect. Yeah. The other thing uh, yeah. we talk about when it comes to radio pharmacy is time mm -hmm. and distance. Okay. So when you are in the radio pharmacy, uh, mm -hmm. it's not time to give stories. Yeah. You yeah. work very fast. Very fast. So that true. you spend yeah. as. Um, as little really amount wanting. with the radioactive material mm -hmm. as is possible. Mm -hmm. We also talk about another aspect of distance, yeah. where you do not withdraw the normal way you withdraw your as normal drug. Yeah. yeah, you have to yeah. work behind a lead shield. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the measures. Of course, there are many other things that have yeah. been put in place to ensure uh -huh. our safety. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are some of the things. And uh, the exposure we get, uh, I can confirm, it's uh, really probably slightly higher than background, especially yeah. if you are doing quality control or uh -huh. if you are doing the dose drawing, uh -huh. but if you're doing the production, you basically get uh, zero exposure, you just get yeah. the background. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, now let us look at now radio pharmacy as a career. Uh, you're one of the actually pioneers in this field. Yeah. So now tell us, um, if there's someone out there who wants to become a radio pharmacist, how do they go about it? Are there any trainings or with a B-Farm that's sufficient? So tell about like any special trainings that someone undergoes for them to actually be a specialist in this field. Okay, um, so radio pharmacy is a bit uh, different yeah. from uh, the normal pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's normal drugs, yeah. but uh, some of the concepts that uh, you deal with in mm -hmm. the radio pharmacy mm -hmm. are not concepts that are taught at B-Farm level. Yeah, it's true. So a lot of stuff is very new, even yeah. the names of the drugs themselves. Uh, it, they are things we mm -hmm. have probably not come across. You yeah. probably have only come across iodine 131. Yeah. So to become a radio pharmacist, uh, mm -hmm. the basic thing is that you have to have a B-Farm, uh, yeah. that's the basic degree, mm -hmm. and then after that you have to do a master's. Yeah. Uh, so there's a master's course in radio pharmacy, so yeah. it's a specialization, just the same way you can do industrial pharmacy, clinical mm -hmm. pharmacy, mm -hmm. so there's uh, radio pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a university in Kenya that yeah. offers the training. Yeah. I know there are discussions going on with various mm -hmm. universities mm -hmm. on starting the course, mm -hmm. but currently there's no university offering it yeah. so you can go to other regions of the world to yeah. train and there yeah. are many opportunities to do that yeah. so we have South Africa we have uh, Morocco but Morocco is for French yeah. and then we have European countries yeah mm -hmm. Macedonia mm -hmm. uh, UK US yeah. yeah so to train currently you have to go outside the country okay okay yeah. uh, so now thank you for the introduction about how someone becomes a radio pharmacist now let us look at the future of radio pharmacy do you think this is a field where pharmacists can venture in or do you think like this is a field where now I can venture in today and then tomorrow I don't have a job or something of the sort? So tell us about the future. Is the future bright or just encourage us <laughs> if you want to venture into oh. this field? Uh, yeah, you know, I normally say that yeah. the future of medicine is nuclear medicine. Yeah. And there's no nuclear medicine without radio mm -hmm. pharmacy or mm -hmm. nuclear it's pharmacy. True. Radio yes. pharmacy is also called uh, nuclear, nuclear pharmacy. pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So the field is just mm -hmm. probably new. Yeah only in Kenya or yeah. in African countries, mm -hmm. but it is not new in, oh, in other countries. most yeah, in oh, most developed, developed countries. countries. You'll okay. be shocked in places like UK and US, yeah. Yeah. radio pharmacy mm -hmm. as a specialization mm -hmm. got recognition before clinical pharmacy. Oh really? Yes. The way right now we are giving now clinical pharmacy the recognition. Wow. Yeah, I okay. know, I know, I know. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's uh, they, 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 there is hope because yeah. now you see uh, if even public facilities yeah. in this country yeah are investing in such facilities where radio pharmacy can practice. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time yeah. before we have each and every private hospital in the country okay. or even counties yeah. having radio yeah. pharmacy. Okay. And what I normally even tell some of my men mentees is mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, sometimes you're, on, you're not only yeah. trained for Kenya, yeah. Yeah. you're trained yeah. for the world. For the world. So long as you help yes. a patient, really, yeah. you must not be here. Yeah. And uh, the opportunities are numerous. Mm -hmm. If you are to Google today, uh, mm -hmm. one of the realists, uh, mm -hmm 
profession mm -hmm. or those people who are on demand anywhere you go in the world as yeah. long as there's nuclear medicine mm -hmm. are radio pharmacists radio pharmacists yes so you find uh, bodies like the international atomic energy agency mm -hmm. are investing mm -hmm. heavily mm -hmm. in the training of radio pharmacists because yeah. there are very few not only in africa but yeah. in the world yeah. there are very yeah. few yeah. Yeah, so there's a heavy investment on that, and that's just to show you that that's where the future that's is. That's where the future is. Yeah. Okay, uh, let us look at some of the challenges that you faced, especially now starting up a department from scratch. <laughs> Were there challenges that you faced? And I know, like when you come out of school, it's always theory, theory, and not the practical. So tell us some of the challenges that you actually faced in coming up and setting up like this department from De Novo. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the, the challenges were a million and one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, uh, some we are still overcoming up to date. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them being probably no one has such a facility in Kenya, yeah, in so you Kenya have nowhere to be benchmark. Yeah. I know we have one in a private facility, yeah. but it's not uh, exactly what is there at KU. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, that lack of benchmark yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, is where the the main problem was mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the other challenge was uh, yes we are two in the country we are two yeah. radio pharmacists in the country both foreign okay. trained yeah. uh, but none of us had actually operationalized the department okay. yeah we both trained okay. in, facilities in facilities where yeah. everything you know you found everything in yeah, place, like in place yes true. Yeah. now to come and operationalize that mm -hmm. you have to go through a bit of stress <laughs> yeah, yeah, to I be able it. to make I things work yeah, um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, of course now the other challenge is is to um, uh, take your place as a pharmacist yeah. uh, because you find even in other places there's a lot mm -hmm. of role substitution yeah. uh, and so to come and say no it is not done this way it yeah, is done, done this, this way, way. I know. because yeah. uh, you know it has to mm -hmm. be done this is the right way it's, it's the, the right way that way. ensures yeah. patient safety yeah. and drug uh, quality mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that is faced with a bit of uh, resistance. Yeah, resistance yeah but as a pharmacist yeah. you yeah. have to stand your ground yes you have to stand uh, your ground mm -hmm, and um, mm -hmm. just make sure that things are done done the right, the right way. way yeah it's yeah true. yeah but yeah. in the process also learn from others because mm -hmm. uh, there's always something to learn from someone it's uh, someone else yes and mm -hmm. also this has these are some of the challenges that actually pharmacists face outside yes. here yeah most of the challenges because you know um sorry to say but this is the reality in most places people don't really know what what pharmacists do mm -hmm. so now when you come as a pharmacist and you want to establish a new department i know there's a lot of like resistance that you face yes yeah but anyway you soldier on and you make it and yeah look at her she's established like a whole department yeah. in <laughs> Guys, yeah. I'm telling you, this is this is great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, finally, we are coming to the end of the video, and I want to you just to give my viewers a parting shot. You know, there's so many like jobless pharmacists outside there. So now, if those ones, if uh, there's any like jobless pharmacist who wants to venture in the field of radio pharmacy, what can you actually tell them? How can you encourage them so that they know, like, at the end, there's the future. <laughs> 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 um, that's actually a hard question, yeah. but yeah. Um, not only in radio pharmacy, but yeah. um, in any field that you think you might excel in mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. that you've identified is your niche. Yeah. Uh, because what you've identified your niche is clinical, yeah. it's industrial, yeah. it's hospital. Yeah. It's doable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the key message or the key lesson I've come to learn mm -hmm. is that your network is your, is net, your worth. net worth. It's true. Mm -hmm. So as a jobless pharmacist, as a yeah. pharmacist who has recently finished internship and yeah. you're looking for a job, mm -hmm. you need to network. Yeah, it's true. You need to make people know you're looking for a job, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we need mm -hmm. to see the value that you can be able to bring. Yeah. And so network, mm -hmm. uh, but at the best of it all, because you mm -hmm. might network and get to those interviews, yeah. but you do not shine in them. So yeah. believe in yourself yeah. and everything is doable. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now one last question. <laughs> As someone who's been top 40, under 40, yeah, how does it feel? And you're even barely 30. Nah. Like, yeah, tell us how is it, like, has it opened doors for you and stuff? Just tell us about that, like, whole experience in, like, five minutes and then we close. Five minutes yeah. a lot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> no, of course, it opens a lot of opportunities in yeah. terms of uh, networking mm-hmm, and in terms mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. Uh, uh, in terms of networking, yeah. in terms of opportunities that are presented to you yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it actually does. So many <laughs> it has come with opportunities mm-hmm. when you're recognized like that. People yeah. start saying, "Oh, Kumbe, she can do yeah, it." You know. You know. True, yeah. So yeah, other yeah. opportunities start being flooded on you. You start becoming guest speakers in mm-hmm. places where you awesome. feel, "Oh my God, uh, awesome. how?" I know. Yeah. Uh, you, you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, as I said earlier, it's just believing in yourself yeah. because um, when you get such accomplishments, mm-hmm. it's very possible to get imposter syndrome, yeah. to feel like, uh, why me? I yeah, feel like there are other me? people yeah, who, are yeah, who are more deserving, but no, it's you true. are yeah. deserving yeah. and uh, it is it is your crown, so yeah. you wear it you with wear pride. It pride. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we've come to the end. I hope this video has encouraged you and guys, if you have any questions about radio pharmacy or anything you want to know, even about her top 40 and her 40, can you let me know in the comment section? <laughs> we'll be able to respond. And Doc, thank you so much for taking your time and coming and just taking part in this. So yeah, uh, any closing remarks before I just tell them to like, share and subscribe? <laughs> no, 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 you're good. In case anyone wants to do radio pharmacy yeah. i'm reachable very yeah. reachable yeah okay yeah. yeah so is it is it okay for me to leave your instagram page here or your email yes. so that if someone out there wants to reach out to you they can do yes yeah, so i'll leave them in the comment section in the description box so make sure you check them out so thank you so much guys for watching i'll see you on my next video bye bye